uh, welcome everybody uh, for coming for an in-conversation session uh, with Swamiji uh, this evening and this morning in the US. Um, before we get started with the in-conversations, we have a few new members amongst us today. So uh, for the benefit of everybody, I'd like to give a brief introduction uh, to uh, Swamiji. Uh, of course, a lot of us know him close to heart. But for the new people, a little introduction about Swamiji, about SS Viren, uh, about the topic for today, and then we will dive right in. So uh, Dr. Swami Yog Pratap Saraswati uh, has been initiated in the Dashanami Sanyas in the lineage of Swami Shivanand and Swami Satyanand Saraswati. He has dedicated his life to further the teachings of his guru and serve the neglected communities near Rikya for 22 years. Since the last two years, he's been working in supporting the backward communities in Maharashtra through Satyam Sumiran Yoga Research Foundation. After completing his medical studies, uh, MBBS, he offered medical expertise in as seva at the Rikya Peet Ashram in Jharkhand. The Rikya Peet Chikitsa Lye has been serving more than 100 villages. Since the last two years, he's been serving the underprivileged segments of the society uh, in areas adjoining Badlapur, Pune, Shirol uh, in Maharashtra. He's also the author of the book, Exploring Yoga and Cancer, and has been facilitating sessions and workshops in diverse subjects of yoga and wellness for the last 21 years. Through his Atma Samvardhan activities, he has been enabling hundreds of people find joy and wellness in life. Since his days at Rikya, he has been conceptualizing and organizing multidisciplinary medical camps with doctors participating from all over the world. In September 2021, he took over Satyam Sumiran Yoga Research Foundation. It's a seva-oriented organization and empowering individuals uh, through yogic principles into daily life. And the foundation seeks to uplift and make self-reliant individuals from neglected clusters through medical camps, value-based education, and sustainable employment employability solutions. It's an honor and privilege for us to have Swamiji amongst us to answer some questions on Indian traditions, yogic principles. And with that, uh, I invite him to join, to start the session today uh, on the topic of Indian fasts and festivals uh, from a yogic perspective. Uh, what better time uh, to you know, discuss this just uh, you know, before Diwali. And uh, with that, uh, Swamiji, thank you so much. And um, I request you to start the session with the Shanti part. Thank you. Namo Narayan. A very warm welcome to all of you. This is indeed a very interesting session because I'm sure all of us know and many of us, if not all of us, have been practicing or following many of these fasts and festivals. But I'm not sure if we know that all of them have a great yogic perspective. And so when this uh, topic came up, I thought it was a very good idea to discuss that in here. This is also a place where I am able to discuss some of the things which I was able to learn from Gurudev and from my time at my Guru Ashram. So I think this is a very nice topic which has been chosen by the organizers and let us see how we can do justice to this topic. To begin, let us start with chanting of the mantra Om three times. Sit quietly, hands on your knees in Jnana or Chin Mudra, head, neck, shoulders back straight, eyes and mouth gently closed. Bring your awareness to your eyebrow center, Bhru Madhya, and visualize a brightly burning flame at this point. And maintaining your awareness on this, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Om.
Together. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yankar Vavahai Tejas Vinavadita Mastu Ma Vedvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hi Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes. And then when comfortable, move the palms away. Open your eyes. Aryom, Tatsat, Namunarayan. Okay. Thank you, Swamiji. So, uh, as Swamiji just said, uh, you know, we, uh, it's a very important, significant topic, especially when we're in the season of festivals uh, in India. Back to back, uh, this is a beautiful time of the year. Uh, but uh, Swamiji, so, uh, you know, my first question is, what is the significance of festivals um, in, you know, not just Indian society, you know, uh, various countries and various regions celebrate different kinds of festivals. Uh, so what is the significance of festivals for a society? Uh, can you tell me what is the significance of the charger for your mobile? Powers, powers the phone uh, without the... Without which the battery will run down. Absolutely. Correct? That is the significance of fasts and festivals. They received a religious significance later on. But before that, they have the crucial aspect of recharging us on an individual level, on an emotional level, on a social level, but most importantly, on a pranic level. Because the pranic energy is our battery and our electric force. And if we run down, we are not able to perform any activities. In a sense, any fasts and festivals all over the globe, not just in India, have this significance. To be able to rejuvenate, to be able to nurture, nourish, and bring up the abilities of an individual. Now, in addition to this basic essence, our social scientists in the past, they very intelligently combined that with different aspects which happen at the same time, different events which took place on those times. And then eventually there is a historical significance also. So when we speak of Durga Puja, Ashwin Navratri, Vijayadashmi, then the first thing which comes to our mind is the image of Ravana being burnt on the day of Vijayadashmi. And I'm sure many of us, if not of all of us, have enjoyed that spectacle. And that sends us in our mind an impression, a samskara. This is not a logical issue. This is something which is there on a very deep level. Ravana, in the example we have taken, with all his ten heads, signifies 
the karmendriyas and the jnanendriyas five karmendriyas and five jnanendriyas and when they run amok when they are not sent in a correct direction they become directionless then they take a very dangerous form just like ravana and you need great energy to be able to overcome that that is the spiritual significance because every person in his or her life needs a guide needs a support needs a milestone and a direction these fasts and festivals provide us with that in addition to providing us with this direction they also provide us with a means to connect with each other in the society today in the time of covid and post covid all of us know the harmful effects of isolation many of us have faced that severe emotional problems once covid is done then we started moving out but what did we find even before covid we saw that we might have four people sitting in a room but every person is neck down immersed in his own world we have people together but the minds and hearts are not communicating and that creates lots of emotional problems communicating with each other helps in recalibrating our relationships and human beings need relationships with each other that is their safety net otherwise when there is a difficulty we don't have anything so that is another aspect of these fasts and festivals to be able to create a more harmonious happy social fabric wherein we can help each other then we have the third or fourth aspect which i had spoken of in the beginning that of the pranic energy you might ask if it is only a social significance we can choose any day why do we have to choose this specific day that there is a very important reason for that you see the indian calendar works on basis of astronomy it is you can call it as a solely lunar calendar it is based on the movements of the sun the moon and the other planets and also of the earth when all of us know that when the sun and the moon are in one line it is a new moon and on the new moon which in india is known as the amavasya the tide in the seas is much higher in the same manner the subtler energies which are available in this cosmos they also have an interplay and depending on the different configurations which take place these energies are released from time to time the fasts and festivals are designed such that this outburst of cosmic energy which takes place can be tapped into and utilized for our desires for our progress of individuals and the society so i feel in a nutshell the fasts and festivals have a very important significance in human life no matter where it exists and this is especially true for yoga participants yoga aspirants yoga sadhaks 
because at this time the energy which i spoke of the pranic energy that energy is bountiful and we need to tap into it if we don't tap into it that energy is lost for us how do we tap into that energy to be able to tap into that energy there are different methodologies and these methodologies are seen as different activities in different fast in different festivals every festival doesn't have the same structure it has different structures because the energy which is released at that point of time in cosmos is different depending on that energy we have got specific methodologies so that we can tap into that energy upgrade ourselves and progress in life right that, that's beautiful swami ji and but you know sometimes i think in the modern day society uh, we see so many festivals right it's difficult to um, you know each day seems important in its own way you know so how do we um, focus and identify which are the most significant days um, in the calendar and uh, what should we be you know doing on those uh, specific days to be able to tap that pranic energy uh, that you were talking about when do we eat when we feel hungry and if we don't feel hungry what does our when we are young we don't want to eat and then at that time what does our mother say it is lunch time please come and have your food it is dinner time please come and have your food so <clears throat> in olden times when the society was structured in a different manner it was structured in a manner which was in sync with our inner rhythms just as we have got circadian rhythms bio rhythms there are subtler rhythms which are there within ourselves and this these subtler rhythms have their own ebbs and highs now based on that these have been worked up so therefore i would say that it is good if we can choose as per our inclination one of these fast festivals per month we do not have to do very much we don't have to go elaborate no the reason for elaborate festivities can be kept for 3 or 4 or as per our inclination but on that day spend 15 minutes trying to connect within to that devata because you see every devata is the form of an energy it is a picturization of that energy when you have a vibration it has been shown that the vibration when specific vibrations are created specific yantras are generated and that has been shown many times but then the energy has to be specific in such conditions so in the same manner when you have that yantra and then it goes into the next dimension then it has a form that is the form of the devata the devata by historical purposes some story has been attached to it so that we can learn from it but more importantly that depicts something which is essential for us so if we would like we can consider that as a devata and connect emotionally with them if we are of an intellectual uh, outlook then we can think and find out not the literal meaning mind you but the figurative description which is there shri ram 
is Maryada Purushottam Ram, a person who maintained the decorums. Krishna is Leela Dhari Krishna. Both are manifestations of Vishnu. But in the same manner as the heater takes the same electricity but heats up and the cooler takes the same electricity but cools down. So in the same manner, Shri Ram and Shri Krishna are different manifestations of the same energy available, present to do what is necessary for us. In the time when Shri Ram manifested, that methodology was essential. In the time when Krishna manifested, that methodology was essential. So therefore, it is very essential that we need to, if we want to analyze, then we need to analyze it in this manner, not just the literal manner, because the literal is many times insufficient. And once we choose that, well, there is a system within each and every uh, festival. There is some austerity. There is some mantra chanting. And then there are few other activities. Of course, today's session is too short to go into the details of all of them. But once we understand the principle behind all of this, then we can understand and we can spend 15 minutes connect to that energy, move on. We don't need to, uh, you know, have the complete pomp and show. We can have shorter activities, but ideally, at least one activity a month, wherein you sit down quietly, connect to that energy and move on. And then twice or thrice a year or four times a year, as per our inclination, we can make that into a social activity also, which is very essential, mind you. So I hope that helps your question. Uh, yes, Swamiji, of course. Um, so, Swamiji, you were talking about, uh, you know, keep it short, keep it 15 minutes, but we've seen like our parents and our, you know, grand, great grandparents, the whole elaborate ritual, you know, the process of like waking up, collecting the flowers, uh, unfortunately, uh, in you know, again, with jobs and uh, with uh, the busy life that the modern life is, we do not get time to do those uh, that process, uh, you know. So, what is still the offering that we do, or st still the festival holds the same significance if we are not able to follow the detailed process that it was supposed to be followed? Yes, it is a very good question. We need to understand two, three points here. You see, in today's times, we are like the hamster. You know, uh, in laboratories, hamsters are small creatures who are used for many experiments. And since they are kept in laboratories, they don't have any exercises. They so they start going... Uh, ill and uh, they have difficulties. So therefore, some wise person designed a hamster circle. What happens in that? The hamster circle is like our big giant wheel. It has got a central axis or you can consider like your tire, uh, the wheel, wheel of your cycle. The hamster is kept inside and the hamster keeps running. As it runs, it pulls the wheel from the top and it keeps running. The wheel keeps turning and he is running and running and running and running, but he doesn't go even one inch further. Our modern society, unfortunately, many times resembles this hamster exercises. We keep running the whole life. And then at the end of it, when we are tired, we ask, what did I do in my whole life? Nothing. Nothing of any significance. So, uh, that is something which has happened that we have unfortunately lost track of what we are supposed to do, why we are supposed to do. Nevertheless, because we are in this situation, we cannot jump out of it. Because this situation is larger 
than an individual. We should understand it, but we can't jump out of it. It's not possible for everybody. So, therefore, that is the role of yoga. These elaborate procedures have their own significance. When we perform yogic practices, what are we trying to do? In yogic practices, we improve the quality of the pranic energy. We improve the quality of the consciousness. These two things happen. And when that happens, then there is a change in our perspective, be it on the physical level, be it on the mental level, creative, professional, wherever. There is a difference which we are able to feel. That is the harnessing of the pranic energy, expansion of the consciousness. Now, what we are able to do in this manner, the same thing is achieved through that entire elaborate process. The whole process is done such that the pranic energy starts increasing. When you say that Ganesha likes red flower, Shiva likes white flower, have you ever paused to think red has a different frequency, white has a different frequency? The energy of Ganesha is different. The energy of Shiva is different. We need specific objects where that energy matches. Why is it? I am sure all of you would know that when we have to offer a flower to any deity, we pick it and without smelling it, we offer it. Why is that so? We could smell it. Ha, it's good. Then we give it. Do we do that? Aise karte hai, kya? Kyo nahi karte hai? Because we cannot uh, take the energy, uh, we have to offer it to the God. Very good. That is true. But on a pranic level, and, and then if it, if it was only for a decorative purpose, then why can't we have like nowadays we have got so beautiful artificial flowers. We can decorate the whole place with that. Why do we need these flowers? Because these flowers they have got pranic energy in them. The dravya which is used, you would notice it. everything has to be fresh. Everything has to be natural. Why? Because that has got a pranic energy. And when we are using all of this in a specific sequence with a specific mantra, because mantra also generates energy, you are creating an energy field. When you create an energy field, then there is an impact. Now, everybody cannot and is not inclined towards practicing yoga. I don't like to sit. I don't like to hold my nose and do all these funny things. That's not my inclination. So then what do I do? Do I have to be left out? No. Our ancestors found out that we are emotional beings. So therefore, they brought in a story which took place at that time and embellished it. They brought in Ayurvedic concepts appropriate for that point of time, integrated that. And this way, it became a multi-dimensional event which takes place, helping us on the physical, mental, emotional, psychological and spiritual level. The pranic energy improves and at the end of it, what do we feel once the puja is done beautifully, correctly? Ah, I feel so nice. At the end of a yoga class, what do you feel? I feel so nice. Why do you feel so nice? Because the pranic blockages which are there, they have been cleared. And so there is an energy which is flowing. And that energy makes us feel nicer. That is the significance. And that is the reason why the, we had that elaborate procedure. Now, since today, in today's times, yoga is becoming or has become very popular. 
so more and more people can understand this and we can go beyond the activities into the essence and activate simultaneously at this point of time it is essential to know that we have got a vistrut puja paddhati but also we have got a trotak short brief there are different things which can be done when you do not have so much time what is it that can be done the scriptures mention all of this it is not that you have to do only the elaborate part you do the elaborate part you have the complete benefit but when you do not have time for that or there are other limitations then scriptures mention different methods by which we can achieve not the same level but comparable levels given our limitations given our short time or whatever limitations we have so when we do not have enough time or when we do not have enough uh, of those uh, items or whatever may be our limitation then we have scriptures mention different methods point 1 point 2 when we in include the yogic practices into this then even without any external objects eventually we can connect to the same energy because ultimately they say that the ultimate worship is within what we are doing outside is just an indicative object so that we can connect within finally it is within swami ji used to say the real life is within it's not outside it is inside but we don't know how to go there this shows us the way to very effortlessly go in and experience that that way we can use multiple methods to achieve the same goal right i i think i completely uh, resonate with that because as a child growing up i used to feel uh, that you know the, the rituals take or the process takes more significance than the feeling in the heart and everybody is getting scolded in the house for not cleaning the house and you know for not getting ready on time so it it became a very stressful uh, moment uh, but if we are able to focus on the you know emotion in the heart or the intent of the uh, process rather than the process itself then it could be you know the as you said very blissful and very joyful versus being associated with stress because a lot of families i still know get stressed out after the puja rather than you know the joy joy coming in right but i would like to uh, add that it is not sufficient just to have the intent i have the intent that i want to study because i want to pass i am i am going into college because i want to become a doctor or an engineer or an architect or an artist or whatever my intent is very clear is it sufficient calls for action so now if i do some studies some way here and there will i be able to have the same results of course done in a specific manner you understand so we need to have both now there are ways to study hard and there are ways to study smart we have to know what we want to do how we want to do so therefore uh, i believe intention as well as action both are essential when there is balance between the two then there is joy and without stress there is no growth correct so there has to be stress because without stress there is no growth but stress has to be directed in a specific manner and supported also in a specific manner otherwise then the stress instead of being you stress becomes this stress <laughs> that's that's well said swami ji 
So uh, with that, I'll take a pause. And if any um, anyone in the audience has any questions uh, related to festivals in general or um, any specific festival or ritual or custom, uh, I'll leave the floor open for a moment or two if you want to ask any questions of Swamiji. Okay, wonderful. So um, I think it's been a very um, short and sweet, um, you know, conversation. But Swamiji, before uh, those were the list of questions and thoughts that I had. Um, and um, my last final question, Swamiji, we've heard that you've been writing a book on fasts and festivals. So could you tell us a little bit more about the book and when can we hope to get a copy of it? Yeah soon soon because uh, yes i have been asked to write that book which is complete also and soon we will be um, publishing that and uh, the concept behind it is to be able to understand the principles and make use of those principles for progress in life. You will see whichever puja you do, whichever chanting you do, at the end of it, there is something known as a falashruti. And in that falashruti, it says that you do this, you will get this. You do this, you will get this. You do this, you get this. You do this, you do get this. Because humans are a bundle of desires. Many times we say that they are the shad ripus. Kama, krodha, lobha, moha, madha, matsar. They are the six enemies in our life. But Swamiji used to say that actually our aeroplane is driven by six motors. And the name of the motors is Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsa. If you don't have Kam, Kam is not only sexual lust, but it is Kamana, desire. Oh, such a nice car. I would like to have that. Krodha. Why is it happening that way? I will not let it happen that way. And so on. We will not do anything in life. So for the masses, these six are the driving forces. Now, when we have these driving forces, then how can we use? You see, the aeroplane is flying. If I want, can I just, uh, I have all the six uh, um, motors running. Can I just uh, fly in any direction, in any manner, anywhere, anytime? There are all those headwinds and tailwinds and this and that, the other, right? So, they chart the path very carefully. Correct? In the same manner, when we have these six motors which are propelling our aeroplane, it needs to be charted correctly. If it is not charted correctly, then we will have an accident. To chart it correctly, First, we need appropriate fuel and we need a proper GPS or a global positioning system. So, these fasts and festivals come to us in the form of the fuel for these six as well as directing the fuel. Because many times if there is blockages in the fuel pipes, the motor is not going to run. So we have to clear those blockages everywhere and then we have to direct it in a specific direction. It is not only for spiritual purposes. It is for everything. There are four Purusharthas. What are the four Purusharthas? Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. So, these four Purusharthas, these are the efforts which 
we do we have heard of dharma we have heard of moksha we have heard of artha we have also heard of kama but they say that artha and kama are not so good dharma and moksha are good but then if dharma and moksha are good why are they not in one side you know they should be clubbed together categorized together why is it dharma artha kama moksha dharma is not religion dharma is your inherent attributes abilities duties so if i want to earn a lot of money then i need to do my duty in my office properly perfectly correctly understanding everything properly right nobody is going to have any free you know oh you can just uh, sit around and i will pay you do they do that way kahi hota hai ji nahi hota hai na kun pasina ek karna padta hai so that is your dharma a boss to hamesha baitha hi rehta hai kya galti kiye hain whatever are my faults immediately oh no i won't pay you for this more seen in the unorganized sector than the organized sector but still that happens so dharma means our ability our efforts done to improve our innate qualities what is my duty as an individual in society there are multiple angles to that i need to understand them i need to perform them properly first thing when i am able to do that then i can work to the second purushartha dharma arth arth means not just money but arth means resources so when you work with dharma then you are able to accumulate arth then once you have arth then you can work on the kama the kamanas the desires everybody has hundreds of desires oh i would like to go to the moon and come back oh i would like to be as rich as bill gates oh i would like to they are all fantasies we cannot fulfill more than 90% of them but if we want to fulfill a desire then we have to work hard for it that is the purushartha we have to do and to do that if i needed the latest vehicle the tesla for example that's the latest now so if i need a tesla i will need lot of artha to get artha i need to do my dharma so therefore dharma artha kama and when you have all of that you enjoy that then you are able to transcend that when we are small young kids that baby doll or those toys they are of great significance to us and if somebody takes it away from us we are all screaming and crying and uh, everything but one year later those dolls are lying in uh, you know a cabinet nobody cares for them they suddenly get lost i don't even know because we have transcended that and gone in a different direction that is moksha transcending so these are the four purusharthas and for success in life we need all of them moksha comes at the end not in the beginning in the beginning comes dharma and to be able to understand dharma and to be able to improve your innate quality and your abilities what do you need you need practices which will upgrade you correct from first class to you upgrade to class 2 then class 3 class 4 you are upgrading yourself so these are all practices which upgrade us and then we are able to have more artha have more kama after kama then comes moksha and then is the satisfaction joy happiness peace in life because finally it is that which is most important that makes sense amiti thank you so much so uh, with that uh, uh, i have no further questions again once again if anybody has any questions uh, on this topic uh, you can raise them now or you can send in a 
message later and we will try and get back to you on the response. Okay, so if there are no further questions, Swamiji. Uh, we'll close with Shanti Pat. Yes, please. Please sit with your eyes gently closed, hands on your knees in Jnana or Chin Mudra. Bring your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumadhyam. And maintaining your awareness at this point, we shall chant the mantra Om three times and conclude the Shanti mantras Om Purnamada Purnamita. Taking in a deep breath for Om chanting. Om. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Hari Om Tatsat Gently rub your palms against each other Place them on the closed eyes Move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om. Tat Sat. Namo Narayan. Jai. <laughs>